Last but not least, this I'm a box and nut category. You guys already knew this was coming. Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. You guys have been requesting this video for a long time. Top 10 human races, ethnicities, whatever the f you want to call it, rank by endurance genes. Obviously with a special emphasis on endurance running, but you can also apply that to a lot of other endurance based sports. Now I don't want to repeat myself too much, so make sure you watch the previous ones. We did height, strength, muscle building, potential. So this one will focus on endurance. As always, quick disclaimer, number one, when I say race, it's just a quick way to categorize people right the world is extremely diverse there are a ton of ethnicities out there but i have to condense everybody into 10 groups and calculate the average else this video will obviously be five hours long all right so i don't want to hear no fucking comments about why am i lumped up with this group why are my people lumped up with this group shut up right if you guys are around the same geographical location and exposed to the same natural selection pressures over time i'm gonna lump you up with the group that you most closely associate with as far as genetic polymorphisms go and last but not least, guys, for the last, you guys need to take a statistics course because this is annoying. Average does not mean all. I repeat, average does not mean all. So if a group ranks somewhere, right, it's on average. It doesn't mean everybody in that group is going to fall into that category, right? So if we said the average salary in the country or the average income in the country is $50,000 a year, that doesn't mean everybody in that country makes $50,000 a fucking year, right? Some of you guys are so fucking stupid, it blows my mind, right? Obviously, some are going to make more, some are going to make less. Same thing with genetics and polymorphism and things like that, right? So when we say a group of people on average are high in this or low in this, it does not mean everyone in that group falls within that category, right? Some will be above the average, some will be below the average. And also remember that at the end of the day, genetics explains 66%, two-thirds of the variance in sports performance. This is proven and has been replicated over and over and over again in the literature, right? But that still means that about 34% of the variance can still be explained by the environment. So that's cultural factors and everything else that doesn't have to do with genetics, right? So even though genetics do play the biggest role in sports performance, by far, again, two thirds, that's more than 50%, there's still a nice little chunk, about 34% of the variance that can be explained by non-genetic factors, right? So for you black pill motherfuckers out there, stop tapping out so early. But anyway, let's get started. The criteria we're going to use again, the same tier list, right? I'm about to nod, best of the best, pill garbage at the bottom, okay, in the middle. Um, again, we're going to rank them, obviously, based on an objective criteria, which is anatomy. So that includes bone structure, limb length, how narrow and wide the waist is, the center of gravity, blah, blah, blah. Again, watch the other videos to get caught up. We're going to include muscle fiber composition and obviously genetic polymorphisms. So the ACE gene, PPR alpha, APQ, CKM, HFE, GABQ, all of those genes are going to play a role in this, right? Let's get started. All right, so let's start with mix. Again, mixed races, that's everybody that's mixed. So if you mix black, mix white, if you Latino, which obviously means you mix Native American, Western, Central African, and European, right? They're always going to be an okay because it obviously depends on who you mix with, right? Next, Samoans, pure garbage, right? You guys already saw this coming. This list is pretty much, it's almost the inverse of the list that I did on strength and power, right? If you have a lot of genetic polymorphism that give you an advantage in strength and power output, then that's gonna fuck you sideways when it comes to endurance, right? Polynesians on average, right? Too big, the anatomy, bad. Too stocky, too strong, too robust, too powerful, which is obviously a detriment when it comes to endurance. Because remember, you got to be short, you got to be lanky, you got to have long legs, you got to have narrow waist and narrow hips in order to dominate in endurance, obviously, on average. And that's literally the opposite phenotype that most Polynesians have. Once again, on average. Based on that, again, Europeans, bad. On average, too stocky, too robust, mainly due to the adaptations that the ancestors had to uh, had to accrue over time, right? Berman and Allen's rule, adapting to a cold climate. So good body type for power, strength, packing on slabs of muscle, but very bad phenotype for endurance. Again, on average. And for that same reason, West Africans, bad. Again, if you saw the video on strength and power, you should already know why. Great phenotype for power, great phenotype for strength, great phenotype for packing on muscle, but on average, very bad phenotype for endurance. Middle East, bad. Same reasons as West Africans. And what fucks them the most is actually that they have 
the highest frequency of the ACE DD polymorphism, right? West Africans is the second on that list, right? So that really fucks them up, right? Because their heart rate goes up way too fast due to this. Again, watch my video on uh, the genetics of the Middle East, North Africa, and some parts of Central Asia, and you know what I'm talking about. Aboriginals, right? Aboriginal Australians, bad for that same reason. South Asians, fucking amazing. Again, it's the complete opposite of the power and strength tier list, right? The anatomy is there, the short stature, the small skeletal frame, the lanky limbs, and a lot of endurance based genes remember guys this is the number one south asians have the number one phenotype when it comes to survival right anything that requires endurance anything that requires having a lower metabolic rate anything that allows you to go long periods of time without food right very very thrifty genes right which is funny because a lot of them bitch and moan about not having uh you know the highest frequencies of the genetics for power and strength and muscle mass and all that but they forget that every single phenotype comes with pros and cons right genes that make you good at certain things will make you terrible at other things right you can't pick and choose it's all based on what your ancestors evolved and had to adapt to native americans same thing right especially as you get closer to south america right they have a lot a lot a lot of genes that make them great endurance athletes if you watch the boxing video i go in more detail a small group of them also evolved at higher altitudes i made a video about that when i did the east african video so obviously that gives them an advantage when it comes to vo2 max and things like that and aerobic capacity asians same thing right mainly east asians obviously fucking amazing the only thing that screws them is you know the limbs right uh, they have the small frame, short stature on average. Obviously, the height is going up due to nutrition, but the only problem is it's the stocky body, right? The short legs and the low center of gravity hurts a bit. Else, they'll be in the about to nut category, right? So they're pretty much like a smaller version of Europeans. Yeah, and it's no surprise that they're right next to Native Americans because remember, Native Americans are actually descendants of East Asians that cross into North America. Last but not least, East Africans, I'm about to nut category. You guys already knew this was coming. These guys are so lucky when it comes to endurance. And keep in mind, this is on average because there's one tribe in there that brought them from fucking amazing all the way to I'm about to nut, which was obviously the Caligian tribe, right? Right. So on average, they check every single box except for acting in three, right? Shorter stature, narrow hips, long limbs, high center of gravity, long skinny ass legs, and adaptation to high altitude, which again, I went into detail in the East Africa video. All right, so they literally have perfect phenotype for endurance. And keep in mind, like I said, this is on average. And like I said earlier, remember genetics only explain about 66% of the variance in sports performance, right? So don't assume just because a group is down here or up here that they're gonna win the next marathon or whatever, right? You still have to factor in the other 34%, which is environment, culture, nutrition, obviously. For example, a lot of people in South Asia have a lot of endurance genes, but one, a lot of them don't even know it, you know, right? Because their parents are pushing them towards a completely different route, right? The academic route, uh, some of them have issues with protein intake, blah, 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 right? So you also have to look at nutrition, environment, culture, and things like that, right? But anyway, guys, hope this video helps. Let me know what tail list you want me to make next. Join the Reddit where we have more of these conversations. See you guys in the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workouts, splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.